four, <laughs> three, two. <laughs> Copyright. No. <Yeah. laughs> Hello, gang. What's good? I'm I'm doing good, man. Good. I mean, it's really funny because I was talking to you like 12 hours ago. Because mm-hmm. um, we were. Was it 12? I feel like it was less than that. We we're gaming till like 1 a.m. through 2 a.m. Finally got Zach into a damn game session. Zach never plays video games. I don't I have time. I don't have time. I don't either. But then as soon as. As soon as I know that Zach is in the game session, I'm like, well, I can't miss this one. <laughs> I literally stopped what I was doing. Literally, I'm working on a server right now, and I literally stopped. <laughs> you were just like, this is more important. This is, it is more important. Playing video games with the boys, Zach, you got to cherish these moments. These are moments we're not going to have later. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. That whole situation arose because Jackson was like, he was sitting taking a poop, and he was like, nice. what could we do? He was like, game night with the boys? And then he called you before he even talked to me about it. Good. And I was with him. <laughs> and he was just like, oh, yeah, let's let's play games. Mm-hmm. And it was a grand old time. It was a grand mm-hmm. old time. By the way, it's 104. Let him in, Zach. Let him in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Uneducation Station podcast. Of course, my name is Zach, and I'm here with my hostess with the mostess, Arthur. Arthur here. I don't know where Hostess with the Mostess came from, but it's hilarious and I love it. It stayed for as long as it has been. <laughs> that's that's been around for probably eighty percent of the lifespan of. This I would podcast. say so, yeah, or at least yeah, eighty percent. Well, I guess fifty percent if we were alternating uh, alternating intros. That's fair. At the very least, right? Yeah, and then. Yeah, I don't know. The The intros have gotten so bizarre and weird that I don't even know anymore. Well, I mean, okay, I so I learned that, I mean, not that we would ever get nominated for this, but I learned that to get nominated for, like, best podcast, you have to have an intro. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, not that we would get nominated for that, but, like, just, you know, for semantics, mm-hmm. right? I feel like we got, we can't, we can kind of do a cold open but we gotta at least do some sort of intro, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though my favorite intros are just cold opens, because it's more casual, you know. Yeah. It's conversational. You don't. Uh, we're you don't leaning end- in our chairs and shit. We are. We are. And then soon we're gonna be leaning on our couches. You know what I think about Zach? I think about us ditching this side of the set and just going on the couch, because it's very rare that we ever get four people on the four people in a podcast. It's usually a three person guest. Yeah. So we may as well utilize the couch more. Mm-hmm. So I should just sit on the couch, and then we have a guest. I scooch over, and they get the mic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what I've been thinking. I may do that, yeah, and it, then just turn this corner more into just storage, or a you know a fun backdrop. Yeah, I I think that that would be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and also it would it'd be kind of funny if you were sitting on the couch, and like I was just chilling in a chair <laughs> over here, just like. Well, I can't here. do that until. I get another tripod because now both of my tripods are broken. Bro, this is fucking... (laughs) You are a a tripod's worst nightmare. I didn't do anything. (laughs) We did nothing. Okay, this one, maybe, but it's not our fault that a screw screw counter-screwed itself inside its own base. That's not our fault. That's physics. And it's poorly poorly manufactured, produced physics. Newer. This one, still not my fault. Is I mean maybe is it my fault for putting my rel- not relatively mid range to expensive camera onto a plastic tripod? Maybe, but my rig isn't even that ex- that heavy anyways. It's just my camera and a lens at this point, and then it just, my, my this tripod just snapped under tension while I was using it. Just the camera just went whoop, fell right into the ground, scared the shit out of me. That's the stuff of nightmares, right? Right there. here, right. It was right here, right here. That's scary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good thing cameras are built to last. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you don't beat the shit out of your gear, are you really using it? That's what I'm saying. All right. The ruggedness adds character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you look at... <laughs> and depreciates the price, but... <laughs> adds character. <laughs> depreciates the resale value, but adds character. I mean, would, I mean my, would my Sigma 16 not be my Sigma 6... Would not be... Like, like the Sigma 16 lens, would it not be the same lens if it didn't smell like cigarette smoke from the previous owner? Does it actually? Yeah. As soon as it came, it, 
I mean, maybe you've just adapted to it, but when I, I, you even uh, you even commented on it. It's like it smells like cigarettes. I'm like, yep. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Mm-hmm. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah, and either either the odor get went away, which cigarette odor on rubber, not gonna get away easily, especially since I didn't clean it, which I probably should have, but I didn't. Uh, but it, it, but I have noticed that it, I don't smell it as much either unless I put it close. So that either means the odor went away, or <laughs> <laughs> or you've gotten or used I've to been it. immune to cigarette smoke, which is not true because it still is icky. So I don't know. It's still yucky. Yeah, that's one of those smells that I don't really mind too much, just because I was around it so often. Because I lived in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and yeah, like, that's true, huh? Yeah, and. Everywhere that I went, it was always like you had to go through a casino and a movie theater to mm-hmm. get to a bowling alley. Mm-hmm. To, it, it's just like all of this crazy mm-hmm. shit. Um, and so at least at this time, I don't know if it's still a thing. Uh, you were able to smoke cigarettes in a casino. Um, yeah, I mean, they they should. St- I mean, not that I go to a lot of them, but they have specific non-smoking areas and smoking areas. So Interesting. Yeah. yeah we would uh go to a restaurant that was like in a casino i can't remember what casino and they would ask us if we wanted to sit at the smoking section or not smoking section at a restaurant right and then it was just kind of like oh you know i think we ended up sitting in the smoking section one time which made no fucking sense yeah i mean you you might have just Sometimes you don't know, right? Yeah. You just sit down and you're like, oh, this is no smoking, or this is the smoking section, or this is the no smoke section. Like, well, thank you for telling me. Appreciate yeah. that. And now I just imagine a whole bunch of millennials just hitting their giant vapes, just like poof, fog machine status. God, I would leave that so quick. <laughs> <laughs> that would be worse. It I would, would No, it would be worse. I would rather you smoke cigarettes. I would rather be. I would rather second hand, second hand inhale nicotine, tobacco, rat poison, than be in the same room <laughs> as a, <laughs> a table of vape puffers. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, we talked about um, the music house. I remember. Yeah. Right? We always we want this music house, and it's growing a little bit more distant as we as we ironically get more into staple jobs that could pay for it, just because. Housing sucks. Yeah. And even if we get more money, housing still sucks. And even though it's getting quote unquote better, it still sucks. Um, it's going to suck for a while. It's going to suck for a while. But assuming yeah. that we ever get one, I remember I mentioned I would, I would, you know, I, I had the grand piano funds. It's kind of not depreciated, but, you know, at this point, it's just kind of dissolved back into my own account. Mm-hmm. But I can still buy one as long as it's relatively, you know, not 20 grand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but. I would I would fund the grand I would sponsor the grand uh, excuse me the grand piano assuming that I wouldn't be able to live in the house immediately I would still sponsor a grand piano but there would be no smoking no vaping near it which is fair that's like a fair justifiable argument yes because I would be in a house with like what three four people who smoke and vape I think it's only me because it would be me you and Jack right right. Well, Alec was in the equation. I don't know if he's anymore. I don't think he is anymore. I don't know. He he's off with his girlfriend right now. So I doesn't don't know. Jack vape? No. Oh, thank God. All right, Zach, it's time to quit. <laughs> it's time to stop. Have you ever tried sucking on lollipops? Yes. Good. You're gonna do more. <laughs> <laughs> How many licks does it take to get to the center, center of, of <laughs> Tootsie Pop? <laughs> to get the center of my nicotine addiction. <laughs> You're gonna have a, the drawer, the 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 miscellaneous cable drawer, the miscellaneous screw drawer. It's just gonna be lollipops, <laughs> like the teacher in a race. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Oh, where's my coffee? It's over there. Sadness, bro. <laughs> In the shakes, man. <laughs> you know, it's actually been a little bit since I've woken up in the morning. Well, I've been kind of like 11 a.m., 12 p.m. guy late again. Yeah. That being said, still better than 4 p.m., so I'm still considering it a win, but I'm back in the morning today again just because I wanted to be up to set up uh, for the set because it's going to be a shorter episode. Sorry for that. Uh, boo. boo. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. <laughs> but I have a busy day today. Can't be helped. 
I were gore that I had a an eye appointment today. Well, I remembered, but I didn't factor in the time slot. I'm like, wait, that would not work out. But we're still making it happen anyways. So yeah, I'm yeah, good. and it it's really funny because we've always strived for like hour and a half, maybe two hours per episode. Mm-hmm. And so for us to like actually have a time constraint where it's like we can't go past this amount of time, it's super bizarre. And I mean, I'm running around like a crazy person, but that's nothing new. Oh, we've kind of like switched sides when it comes to the sleep schedule just because of the schedule that I'm working right now. Oh, are you working later? Yeah. So mm. I'm working 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. Ah. Uh, so is that new to this job? I thought at, at the when you started, it was normal hours ish. Yeah, it was normal hours. And, and it changed. Then, yeah, it changed after training and all that kind of stuff mm. because all of the people who were training me weren't going to be there at three o'clock in the morning. And so I was like, okay, fair. That's fair. Yeah. And so now I'm working 5 PM to 3 AM, which Mm. is, it's nice because I'm usually up late anyways. But the only problem is, is that when I get home from work, I just want to sit and watch YouTube and just kind of dink around for a while. Right. Instead of passing out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my getting off at 3 AM ends up, becoming me going to bed at like 5 30 6 a.m mm-hmm. and then i'm up at like 1 p.m right yeah that's rough but i mean that's how these shifts go right yeah because if i were to get this intel position like i was talking about i would also be kind of like the later shift as well yeah i don't know if it would be quite night because it's 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 a uh, it depends on what position i end up getting but assuming i get a night then i would have a similar position as well and uh, i mean okay a lot of people, even my dad, because he wants me to, he's really into this whole, like, you know, if you sleep late and wake up late, then your body uh, is actually, it's actually worse for your body. Now, I haven't looked this up, but to my understanding, that's not true because that's, because time is relative. Right. So as long as you get to sleep and wake up and stay awake for the same amount of hours, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is technically we live in a, uh, like a day functioning society, right? Right. Where things move during the day and not so much at night. That's the only that's the only difference. And also another thing to consider is it's all about consistency. Mm-hmm. So if you're consistently going to bed at five AM, waking up at one PM, you know, that's a sufficient amount of sleep. Mm-hmm. You're you're getting the quality of sleep that you need. But it's basically the exact same as if you were doing like a a 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. job and going to bed at 9 p.m. I think the only thing that ends up being part of quote unquote deterioration is if you force yourself to stay awake that late through energy drinks and stuff. If it's a natural if it's a natural body clock, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're slamming coffee and energy drinks until 5 a.m. crash, wake up at 1, 2 p.m., then that's bad. Right. Right. Yeah. With uh, with this schedule, it's been a little bit rough to like get into the swing of things with it. Right. Well, you've just been, like you said, you were the opposite not too long ago. Yeah, like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And so, I have been using like caffeine to get me through my shift, but it's been like better not be energy drinks. It's totally not energy <laughs> drinks. I don't know what you're talking about. Zach, it's time to get into tea. Caffeinated tea. Caffeinated tea. Well, I've been drinking coffee as well. So, uh, it's you re- got to cut that energy drink out of your life, Zach. I it's know. It's going to make you feel better. Why you got to tell me things that are good for me? <laughs> Zach, make a choice. Energy drinks or vape? Well, make a choice. I am your life. I am your life coach. Make a choice. Well, one of them is an actual addiction. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is vaping. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, I could totally cut out the energy drinks, honestly. Mm-hmm. like if, I'm, I'm pulling your leg, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. But just in on, on a serious note, like I could cut out energy drinks and yeah. I would be fine. I mean, it, it depends because I've just cut out soda in general, caffeinated yeah. su- high sugar. I've just cut that out. Even like to orange juice and shit. Cause do they be packing sugar and stuff into that? Oh, dude! Like the what? what what's the consumer orange juice that you just grab? The Minute Maid, right? Yeah, yeah. And like simply orange and stuff like that. Yeah, that shit's packed with sugar. It may as well be a soda. 
No, seriously. A one hour of life advice from the Unad podcast. Yes. Because I've been health conscious recently. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, not too health conscious because I, I don't care that much. I've, I've, ha- I've mentioned my take on dieting before. Right. I think it's silly unless you are morbidly obese or anorexic. You should enjoy life and the food that you're able to eat. But, right. you know, you shouldn't, be, you know, if, if this cup of orange is the same amount of sugar as a Mountain Dew, then maybe we should, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should, <laughs> maybe care a little bit, you know. <laughs> maybe we should just drink the Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've only been limiting myself to water, I, I said water, coffee because I'm into it, but that's really the only in, ca- caffeine intake. And it's only about two, maybe three mac, three cups of max a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually that's only if I, cause I, since I do a whole process, as much as I love the process, it's still a process. So it also in a way makes it so I don't want to do it. And because, it also makes it because deliberate. cleanup sucks. True. And it also <laughs> makes it so that it's deliberate. Mm-hmm. It's like a deliberate process that you're going through mm-hmm. to make it so that you're like, ah, yes, coffee. coffee. Whereas if you just do like the the Keurig where it's just like and then the the boily yeah. bean water comes out then you're like ah yes this is nice and it yeah. takes like a minute yeah yeah it's, when you think about it like that it sounds kind of scary <laughs> it's like i i i need to procure caffeine just press just press a button and you get it ah yes i am sustained for the next, <laughs> I am for the next hour <laughs> i am sufficiently caffeinated it's It's really cool because at my work, they have one of those automatic, like fully automatic coffee machines Mm. where all you have to do is go boop, 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 and then it, 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 coffee. Yeah. Um, which is really nice because I never bring coffee from home. Right. But, but it encourages you to drink like way more coffee than Mm. you should. Right. But then again, I mean, you don't want to spend your entire break brewing a a singular cup of coffee, you know? So I get it, right? Uh, but I'm. That's just gonna. That that's not. That's just something that's. You know what are you gonna do, right? Yeah. So you, it's not for me to figure out how you're gonna figure it out, but hopefully we can figure it out. Yeah, and I'll come through with some coffee. Shit, I'll make. I'll brew coffee for the gang. <laughs> you're like, I'll go to your work, brew some, brew some coffee. Yeah, coffee for everybody. <laughs> You're you're like the Oprah of caffeine addiction. <laughs> hey now, <laughs> I, but I wouldn't be encouraging the multiple coffee. I just I'm here for one singular cup of coffee. I'll make it strong, but one singular cup. I think that's the trade off. A good trade off to make it stronger. If you buy sto- ga- gas station Starbucks coffee, mm. and you buy the quote unquote triple shot, it is triple shot, is but it's it also though? yeah. Is it though? It's also like a, a a bunch of milk and sugar, you know. Yeah, it's so funny when I see those people who are like, "Oh yeah, I bought three shots of espresso, mm-hmm. and then twelve ounces of milk." Where it's like, "Holy shit, man!" Yeah, I mean, eh, it's whatever. It's the same idea as like, you know, mixing medicine inside a drink. Oh, so yeah. you're still getting it, but. I think at what cost? At what though? right? At what cost? With the, all the extra dairy and shit and sugar that you're dumping into your system, which right. may not even be good for you in the long run, or just good for you in the moment. I don't know how it affects your system at the time. Right. I mean, I've cut off dairy almost completely, and I've almost I'm I'm very close to being lactose intolerant. Every now and then, I can tell. Sometimes when I consume dairy, uh, excuse me, I get the you know, get the shits, or not maybe not the shit, more like the you know. The stomachy stuff. The grumbles. The, the grumbles, grumble grumbles. Yeah, the grumbly grumbles. Yeah. But it's only sometimes. Uh, so, uh, if it's light, it's okay. I put a little cheese on my eggs, but that's about it. Otherwise, I've gone completely to non-dairy milk. I've realized that as far as things that my body can handle, I'm basically the equivalent of a human garbage disposal. Because mm. I could, I could, anything can just right, be processed. That's good. And that's good. Because that's, th- then that means that fuck dieting. You're a you're a healthy, healthy, strong rock climber boy. You're good in your exercise, and you're tall. Who fucking cares? Eat your food, right? <laughs> Eat your food. Eat your food. Eat some food. You know, I, I, I have a bit of a pet peeve, Zach, about oh no the workout community. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. We get to talk shit about my brother. 
<laughs> Hold up, let me sit crisscross oh, applesauce. Okay. I'm ready for the show. Nice. Uh, Everybody knows every single episode. I try to get Zach super involved. <laughs> so, Zach sits on this pl- this plane of existence when I try and speak to him, and, and my goal is to get him to get r- to roller coaster him in these episodes. So basically, he's trying to trigger me. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> no. Well, that's that's a good way to get that reaction. It's working. So okay, I love my brother. Mm-hmm. He he has definitely changed a lot, but there was a period of time where he was like super gym bro, stereotypical, like, right. oh, you need, you you're you're at a caloric deficit, yeah. which means that you're not gonna maintain muscle growth. And blah, blah. this is how he talked during that period of time because he was also really stoned, and mm-hmm. <laughs> and well, I'm so, a caloric deficit, but that's for just reducing body fat. But go ahead, go on. So he would he would sit there and harp on me about going to the gym, doing all this kind of stuff. And so inherently, I just don't like going to the gym and working out. Mm-hmm. Like I, it's it's over the course of like most of my impressionable life was being told that like, I my physique is not like attractive. And, like, I need to be bigger. I need to change, like... Yeah, I mean, mid-2010s, you know, it was it was really about that. So, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Right. But also, like, I lived with him. So it was, right, yeah, it that, was a little rough. bit of a pain in the ass. And so yeah. now that I'm at a point where I'm, like, I'm trying to grow stronger just mm-hmm. to be better at the sport that I enjoy, mm-hmm. which, by the way, I haven't been able to do because of my ribs, which has made me really right, sad. Right, right. Um, Broke his ribs, by the way, if you didn't catch last episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, he, was, them. he was tangling with a bowl to save a school of children. That's not what happened. But mm-hmm. And then he caught a bullet from a... from a, The bowl had a gun. The bowl. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I got so used to... <laughs> the bull said, I can't fucking hit this guy. Fucking, you pulled a strap. <laughs> <laughs> pulled a Glock out of his pocket. <laughs> Out of his bull pocket. Um, fuck. Where was bull I? Bull bussy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. That's so gross sounding. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know how old this water is. I don't know how old this water is. <laughs> Pounds the rest of it. Water is water. Go on. So, yeah, I got so used to seeing the people who are like hardcore gym bros Mm -hmm. like as assholes right um and so i mean i know a bunch of really cool people who go to the gym and so it's kind of hard to to like give an over generalization of people who go to the gym or anything like that no for sure like i think most of my friends if not all of them who do go to the gym i know them as good friends yeah and they're great people and they go to the gym you know because they want to better themselves, and that's fine. I mean, and shit. They, and they adapted to the gym life, too. And, they, you know, if it's getting them into the gym, then who cares, right? Right. But the online persona of, quote-unquote, gym bros is very dominant. Yeah, and very uh, condescending. And unfortunately, you grew up with said stereotype. Yeah. And random side note, Jackson's been working out lately. Yeah, he told me about it. Dude, he he's looking so good. It makes yeah. me so happy mm-hmm. because he has like the perfect body type for someone who wants to like train and yeah. get stronger and everything mm-hmm. like that. Um you know, he has like a he he's changed a lot with his physique and it makes me really happy cuz you know, he's feeling better, looking better, and he's happy. So if he's happy, I'm happy. But yeah, that stereotype of just the gym bros who are just like oh I'm a I'm a manly man because mm-hmm. I do man things like pick up heavy shit and put it back down again. <laughs> <laughs> Cardio's for pussies, like all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's it's different for every person. Yeah, like, though, so I don't go to the gym either, but I don't have an issue with the gym personally, right? Because I mean, I did strength training in school in high yeah. school, SST, uh, strength training, and then whatever the other T was, speed and strength, speed strength training. Wait, yeah. what? S Oh, SST. I was thinking STT. I'm like, wait, that doesn't run. <laughs> STD. Straight. No. <laughs> I did S I did STD in school, right? And I <laughs> my favorite unit was gonorrhea. 
<laughs> but it was a lot of fun, honestly. Like, it was a lot of fun going to the weight room and being in your groups and doing your max and having everybody crowd around. You know, it's the that the 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 gym community vibe is a lot of fun. Yeah. And even though there was a big range of people from big to twigs, you know, everybody was so supportive of each other, mm-hmm. and that's really cool. And that I respect. The gym, there's a lot of gym community stuff, but it, it it's it's so tough because. You know, I mean, look, I gr- I'm Asian and I grew up in the mid tw- mid two thousands, twenty tens. I'm all about this. I'm all about stereotypes, right? Yeah. It, it's whatever. It is what it is. I don't get offended by it like my other fellow Asian Americans. Just is what it is, right? So when I look, when it, it's h- tough for me to. Just say there really is that gym bro stereotype because they they do exist and they are very dominant. Like they are, they're not. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to call them the majority, but they have the loudest voice. You see them all the time. They're always on YouTube and TikTok and you know shorts and all and Instagram reels and all that. They're so, always there. So that image is just painted so hard, so hard. But then to counter this, right? My favorite, because okay, so for a quick context, I have been getting more into working out, right? I don't go to the gym, but I, uh, my stance on working out is the same idea as eating food. I don't really care to get too big, but I just want to maintain myself mm-hmm. and stay physically well. So I, and I, I'm just having fun with it. I'm trying things like I mentioned calisthenics just because it's new and it's fun. I've gotten into boxing. I'm playing basketball for cardio because like I, I can't run. I cannot run long distance. I can't run no further than maybe around this block. That's pretty sad, Zach. <laughs> I'm not much better. Exactly, right? But I could I could play basketball full court for a whole ass day and have and you know and be shit shit tired, but I could do it. Right? It's about having it's about doing something to make to make it more fun. Some right. people can sit there and run on a treadmill and watch South Park. I couldn't do that. Right. I, I I but I can I can run a full core basketball game all day, right? Yeah. Excuse me. So that's what I choose for cardio. I recently I've watched Jujutsu Kaisen and I'm like fighting is cool again. Got back into watching Jackie Chan and stuff. Fighting is cool again. I've done boxing into my cardio, right? Mm-hmm. I'm finding all these ways of have fun with it. Uh body weight is I, I don't have I don't since I don't go to the gym, I don't have a lot of uh actual weights, right? Plates, benches and stuff, and I don't feel comfortable doing solo you know, having a solo rack and putting myself into potential danger mm-hmm. because I'm a clumsy boy. So body weight's the next option. Calisthenics is perfect for that, right? It's just finding these puzzle pieces that work for you specifically. And then that's been my workout routine. It's been super inconsistent. Some some weeks I work, uh, some some weeks I do five to six or, or, or damn the whole week. Some weeks I don't, I, I skip the entire week, right? Some, or I guess some weeks I do six to five to seven days. The next week I'll do no days, right? Super right. inconsistent. But it's whatever. I feel fine. I feel way better than I did before I started working out again. Yeah. So it's it's been I, I, the and this is where I'm going to lead into my biggest pet peeve of this idea of this and part of it has to do with this current era of era of YouTube and titling and the format of videos is that you are doing something wrong. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed this. I've seen it like all over the internet. You this current era of YouTube right now is you are doing something wrong. Seven years of working, seven years of cooking, seven, 20 years of photography taught me this or mistakes of a beginner or uh, you're doing, you know, are you doing this or you are you doing this? You should be doing that. This kind of condescending idea. And, and now to be fair, you watch these videos. It's a gr- nice guy, right? He's talking in front of a camera and enjoying making a video. But it's the topic and the idea of this just bad mojo of I know more than you, the viewer, right? I know more than you. I'm going, I am going to teach you what you're doing wrong. Now that, that inherently is what teaching is technically. But when you kind of, when you kind of structure it like that, that, that just gives it bad heebie jeebies. Am I looking too much into it? Yeah, of course I am. Right. Right. Obviously. But I did, I do, I did communications. I love communication. So I just love thinking about these things. And that's what I noticed. And especially in the workout community that I'm not too into, first of all, first and foremost, I, I am still an outsider thousand percent because again, I'm not super into it, but because I've gotten into it uh, just a little bit, 
it floods my YouTube recommendations as it as that's how YouTube works, right? As one might. As one might, right? I watch one single video on boxing and then now all of a sudden every single YouTube shorts is about boxing and taekwondo and 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 Muay Thai and I'm like all right, you know, and that's it. Uh but it's it's always like are you doing push-ups like this? You're doing it wrong. And then they do it one way and then I, then literally the next video or the next short you you flip, you flip it's like are you doing push-ups like this like like basically what that guy said no you're doing it wrong you should do it like this or you should do it like this or you should do it like, and it's like what cool who's right everybody's wrong every single video is contradicting each other i saw one video it wasn't working out but no it was working out it was like you're do i i forget what it was specifically i'm forgetting but it, let's just say for the example push-ups now there's a ton of ways to do different push-ups mm. and and it's cool because push-up is really cool because the way that you re- arrange your hands, your wrists, and your elbows, and your position, you can hit all sorts of parts of your upper body. That's awesome, right? Right. So, why is one of those positions wrong? They're not. They're all right. As long as you know what part of the body you're trying to hit. is it? Are you focusing your chest, your bicep, your tricep, your shoulders? As if, you, if you can figure that out. Okay, here, here's one thing. Oh, I remember what it was. It was, it was, it was abs. There was oh. one, you know, the bicycle, like yeah. this, like this thing. Yeah. Right. There was, it, it was so fun. It was so stupid. Literally, I'm watching a short and it's like, are you, you know, how to get abs fast or whatever. Right. You know, that's how they tie them. Like, okay, whatever. I mean, I'm just going to watch it anyways, because I'm on my 100 to 200 short kick anyways. So I'm here. Um, <laughs> we're already here. We're already here. I may as well watch it, right? And then, like, don't do just normal, you know, crunches or whatever. Do bicycles, and that's fair. You're engaging your legs, your hips, um, more of your uh, the side. I don't know. I don't know these terms, um, but you know, the, more of your your ab abdomen and lower body area, right? Mm-hmm. And why not? And you're hitting that. That's good, right? You're getting you're getting the core that you want, and it's a lot faster to do like a set of bicycle kicks than like three different core sets to do each one individually, right? right? Or you can just do it in one exercise, right? Are you? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to the next short, and it says, are you doing bicycle kicks? Don't do that. I'm like, what? What do you... Well, okay, well... And then he and then the, he does something else. I can't remember what it was. And then... It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Because n- neither of the, those two people were, were wrong. They're both right. Because it's just whatever the fuck you want to do. I've learned in exercising is that whatever gets you motivated to do it, you should just do it. And whatever you want to hit, you just hit it. Have you ever wanted to do show? Let's say, let's say you're doing a push up, and you're doing a push up, and you're like, man, my my, I don't feel like I'm getting my shoulders. So you change your position until you hit your shoulders. Oh, okay, cool, I got it. Mm-hmm. That's it. And there's a lot of uh, videos on explaining where you should put it, but everybody, every person's body is different. Right. So it's just a matter of what, where you should put it. And you don't know that until you just you, you put your ass on the ground and figure it out. And then you figure it out, and okay, cool. And then maybe that doesn't work for someone else. Someone makes a video, are you doing it like this? Don't do it like this. But it works for you. Right. So who cares? And so it- I'm going to keep doing my damn bicycle kicks. <laughs> and, and 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 you know and live my life because i'm hitting the points that i want to hit i feel it right if you can feel it on the points that you want to hit right mm-hmm. then who the fuck cares right and it's also the purpose of why are you doing it mm-hmm. so for you it's just general like health and maintenance and mm-hmm. all of that kind of stuff and like for me it's very specific to rock climbing and everything like sure. that and and so a lot of it is opposition training. Mm-hmm. So we do a lot of pulling and rock climbing. So you need to do pushing exercises like push-ups, bench press, oh, yeah. all of that kind of oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, and also like core exercises and all that. And so the reason why you're doing said exercise or the reason why you're working out, like what are you working towards? Or what what is the motivation of why you're doing it in the first place. Cause that can drastically change the way that you do even a simple exercise, like what you were saying, pushups. Mm-hmm. It all, it, it all can be very tailored to individual people doing it for individual reasons. So let's say Jackson and I go to the gym and he is like doing all these exercises and stuff. And I'm going along with him. Um, 
you know, the way that I think about it is I feel like it's a little bit more fruitful to go light and a lot of reps. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, it's easier to like fatigue your muscles more like thoroughly. Like, mm-hmm. have you ever sat there and tried to do a hundred push ups in a row? Oh, yeah. No, that's death. I mean, I used to do that. I used to do a hundred push ups, a hundred sit ups every morning. Because that that was that was the period when I wasn't working out anymore, and I'm like, well, I gotta do something. Right. So, yeah, if if you're going until failure, mm-hmm. like I, I, the way that I see that, and obviously this is a very uneducated opinion, the way that I think about it, that's like the best way to go. Yeah, failure is usually the way that you want to go, and whether that be from endurance or, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Endurance or just the heart, bigger load, I guess. Yeah. Then yeah. I'm the opposite. I actually do harder exercises or harder, I guess, in the way, more load, less reps. Mm-hmm. The reason is because, uh, yeah, you're right. Different different, different amount of, if, if, depending on the spectrum you choose, you know, low low rep, high weight, or low weight, high rep, it does different things. Again, I'm not an expert in this right. either, right? I've watched a few YouTube videos. That's it. Uh, but it depends on what you want to do and, and how and how that works for you. So for me, since I don't have weights, I learned that just doing harder harder exercises will counter or will figure that out. Do you know what a pistol squat is? Mm-mm. So a pistol squat. You know what a squat is? Of course. Sick. All right. Cool. Um, have you ever done a squat without weights? Yeah. It, it's. Can I? Uh, I mean, different for everybody. But is it not that bad? It's not that bad. Okay. Cool. Um, if it, and if it's bad for you. Then good. Keep at it. Do it. Do it. Right? <laughs> Do more. Do more. Yeah. Until it's not. And then when it's not, like uh you and I, uh, speaking humbly as much as I can, like you and I, mm-hmm. you try some I I watched this. There's this I can't remember what his name is, but he's pretty cool. He's just on YouTube shorts and he's a really flexible dude. He he showed me pistol squats on shorts. And basically you it's a squat, but one of your legs is up. Oh, so I've you do seen a those. one legged squat. Yeah. Now, Zach, you don't have to do it now, but when you get home and maybe you put on some shorts, you know, maybe not jeans, or you can try jeans if you want, and you slam a pistol squat, you tell me if you can do it, because <laughs> it's been like three weeks and I can't do one without support, without holding onto a chair. It sucks, mm. but I only do 10 reps, three by 10, and my legs are noodles. Yeah. That's it. It's interesting to see. I, Zach, I am holding for dear life, too. And and, and 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 I'm not making I'm not holding it for like like I'm not using support to turn it into an arm exercise because obviously that would be counterintuitive. Right. I'm using it to keep my balance and also if I fucking die then I won't you know die. <laughs> yeah. If my legs die I won't die right. Right. But even then it's like damn I can barely I it's even by even with three by ten with support I'm essentially reaching failure every time. It's really funny when you find those exercises or like find those things that just destroy you mm-hmm. morally. It's yeah. like it, <laughs> the it, it's really interesting seeing other people do things that like you you can do physically pretty easily, um, and or, or like vice versa or like you say that as a rock climber and then you bring me and Jackson to go rock climbing we get shit on right. Yeah, but like I, I take you outside to play basketball and I'll shit on you any day, Zach. So I get it. We we've done that. We've been there. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> but but that that's the thing is that you're you're able to take something that you specialize in or take something that you spent a lot of time learning and refining and mastering, and then you share that information with other people and you turn it into something that can be enjoyable for everybody. Um and so one of um one of my f- favorite things to do is bring people rock climbing with me Mm -hmm. because for one they always think it's way easier than it actually is um Mm -hmm. and for two i love being that person who's like driving them to do better Mm -hmm. driving them to to push their limits beyond what they think it could be right and i always end up surprising people like Mm -hmm. for example when andy and i went uh this most recent time um you know he and i well he was climbing like two grades harder than he thought he was going to be able to Mm -hmm. and so i love seeing people push past their own expectations and 
surprising themselves with how far they can actually go and how strong they actually are. Mm -hmm. And I love taking you. Like, we need to go again at some point soon. For sure, yeah. Because, like, you you enjoyed it for the same reason that i do because it's a physical battle and it's also a mental battle it's yeah. problem solving i you love gotta, problem solving big you, fan you gotta do the big thinkies mm -hmm. you know figure out the best body positioning mm -hmm. figure out the best way to hold on to the holds and everything like yeah. that well hopefully it's better because i've been working on pulling more so yeah you know but it's it's a it's a big pulling thing i mean shoulders and sh shoulders and back is something nobody like actually works on unless they go out of their way to do it right that's why rock climbing is difficult yeah well that's not that's not why why but that's a big part of it right yeah. that's what i've learned because after i started doing shoulders and back again or not again started doing it because i never did it i'm like damn my, uh, it hurts <laughs> my shoulders are like eh. <laughs> that shit hurts yeah i mean i was never someone who can do a lot of pull-ups at it in, well maybe i haven't really tried it in a while but you know that, that idea right right but it's it's cool uh so the one of the I never got to it, but uh, one of the bigger pet peeves was uh, kind of ties into what you were saying before of like what you want to do, because when you watch you watch these videos, right, of uh, the, the that I mentioned, right, you're doing this wrong, do this instead or whatever, ba like basically these trainers who are not trainers, right, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. I mean, I'm not a professional editor, but I would I would I can teach editing, right, right, but it's like you know these buff steroided out dudes right mm -hmm. you want to look like me you know do this no you you did you did a little bit extra than that but you know we won't say anything uh <laughs> you're like bro for me to look like you i would need to stick a needle in my butt and right i want to do that and <laughs> and and it's it's it, it creates this kind of it, okay it can do two things one it can motivate you to be like i want to look like him but do you really want to look like him because you're not going to do that you're not going to want to go through the shit that he goes through. No, 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 no. If you don't do quote unquote that, that I'm going to leave out, you're not going to, you're not going to get there. Right. So either you're going to fight an uphill battle and never reach the result you wanted, or you can, or, or th that that's one way to look at it. Or, uh, if you can be positive about it, I want, it would be cool if I get to, to look like that, you know, and that'd be great. Uh, then it's like, I, I, I just, I, I kind of, even though I'm a more of an optimistic person, I, I view the former where it's like, I, if I wanted to work out and do my best and then I see a video of someone just roided out, mm -hmm. oh, I said that, damn it. Um, and like, oh, do this to look like me. And then I imagine someone trying everything and doing what they say, except the other part. And then they don't reach it and they feel demotivated about it. Right. But it's like, if you got to, so... It, 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 my my results are kind of everywhere because I'm trying to consolidate what my point is. But the I will just say this: one of my favorite exercising like shorts or videos or whatever are the more wholesome ones mm -hmm. or the ones that are more realistic. Like there's one. Oh man, I've had my phone. I don't have it on me, but I would check. But it's a cool, cool guy. Um, he's the one that kind of got me into this whole idea of body weight and calisthenics and stuff. Um, where, where he's not like the best at it because I mean I don't know if you've seen anybody who who's like calisthenics pro but they're like wizards wiz yeah actually defying gravity type shit mm -hmm. he's not that but he's just like i do it just you know because it's good for the body weight and um he's also you can i can tell in his videos that he's enjoying the video making process mm -hmm. very easy to tell um and i love that so good for him and he has a really smooth deep voice and he's tall and he's and he's he's buff and but not like you know <sighs> you know like you know that buff right yeah but he's a good looking dude right just fucking shredded he's he's a good looking shredded dude but a realistically shredded dude right, right? and i can respect that yeah and i can like i can i can get there right mm -hmm. right so I, I i think his name is dante but i can't remember i uh i'll look it up at some point or if uh no i, I won't grab my phone but the reason okay sorry the reason why i like his videos is because they're more realistic and there's he's that's a lot of like kind of life coaching talk that he he does where it's like you know uh not everybody can uh uh so, like you know it's hard to find the time to work out but it's possible you can do it um he gives options for like if you were to do it in the morning before school slash work during during school slash work after school or sorry 
not during that wouldn't make sense um before school slash work after school slash work during the evening you know and options or what you can do or like um if you can't if it's tough to wake up how you know stretches to do to wake you wake yourself up and more i guess i don't know if motivational is the right word but it's thoughtful i guess right Mm -hmm. and it's not that like gym bro like do this to look like this it's like you know do your best you know and it's more positive reinforcement rather than uh, then it's like positive coaching rather than instructions right yeah if that makes sense yeah and, and, it, I, and i love his videos for that and it's super it's super it's, it's super wholesome and his videos are uh, um, a lot a lot his shorts are a lot more fun and it got me to get back into like his his shorts specifically uh I, i'm sorry if, if if i said dante and it's not dante but his shorts specifically got me back into working out again mm-hmm. just this this ish slash last month ish it's more of trying to find the best version of yourself and working towards that right. as opposed to working towards an expectation that or might not a, be realistic. A, yeah, a goal that you're never going to be able to attain mm-hmm. naturally at least. Mm-hmm. And those are those are the the goals that are the most rewarding because you set a goal for yourself and through nothing more than uh, motivation and spite. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You make it happen. Well, you know, okay, here's a, a, a another thing that, not him specifically, but this, at this point, I'm just saying like this kind of, I'm, it's almost like a section of, of these exercise shorts where it's like yeah. the, the wholesome section or something like that, right? <laughs> or the realist, the real positive reinforcement, the positive reinforcement section, right? And not the gym bro, I'm a personal trainer, not personal trainer section where it's like, um, okay, I don't know if it's the same for you. But growing up, if you did a knee push-up, you're a bitch. Yes. Right. Okay? But these guys are like, if you can't do a push-up, it's all good. Drop the knees. Yeah. You know, if you can't fit, or even if you can do push-ups and you're doing your best and you're reaching that failure point, you haven't reached it yet. Drop the knees and keep going type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That idea, that concept, that's that's really, that's, that's, that's motivating. That's like, okay, you know, I'm even if I can't, like I, I try and do. Let's say I don't know. Uh, a, I'm a, I'm someone who ke- who cannot finish, like a three by ten of push ups. Right. Mm-hmm. It's okay to drop the knees. Yeah, because you're gonna get more out of those last two or three reps that you right. did on your knees than you did just, just uh, not doing it at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but that's not a concept when we were growing up. <laughs> it was like, you better do those push ups or you're a bitch. Yeah. Or it was like, it was always a competition t- for when, especially when we were doing like the testing, the. Oh, yeah. Like the, the push up test, sit up test, pacer test. The fitness gram pacer test. Yeah. I mean, you can't really make that easier. It just is what it is. But, you know. It's just horrific. <laughs> and. Apparently, I don't do that anymore. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I kind of liked it. It was kind of. Well, okay. The, the camaraderie of it was really funny. I'm just like, we need to get through this together. Yeah. <laughs> God, dude, that was hell. No, it was hell, but the but the the pain and suffering we all felt as a as a as a class was 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 great. I mean, misery loves company, so yes, it yes. makes sense. But seeing, I'm speaking, looking back, obviously during the time, I was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> it was like the, I would I would rather eat fiberglass than be in the situation that I'm in right now. But it's it's cool to have that type of camaraderie and to have that sense of community and everyone's just trying to mm-hmm. push everybody to beyond what they expect from themselves mm-hmm. and that that's the only goal that i have in anything that i do is push myself past the expectations that i have set for me that's good and i love being the hype man like mm-hmm. whenever i go and do anything with anybody i'm always the guy who's hyping you up pushing you like yeah. encouraging you to to try your best and to do as well as you possibly can you really need those people because like you you no matter what you're doing you need a spotter even if it's not that heavy you need a spotter not for safety well safety is important of course but just to just to have a person get you up you know yelling, push, in, your ear, yelling yeah. in your ear to push that last rep because you can you can do it but you know, pain is a mental game, right? Yeah. And first of all, don't ever, don't ever exercise to pain. That's not a good thing. But you can do more than you think you can. Right. You just your your mind just just kind of chickens you out, right? Yeah. Um, out of fear, which is which is a, a a safety precaution. 
like an innate safety precaution, which is fine. But if you're in a safe environment with a spotter, you can push yourself and it's fine. Mm -hmm. And your spotter, uh, assuming they have a good enough experience, will know the difference between pushing yourself and nope, it's not going up anymore. I'm in, I'm in danger, right? Yeah. Uh, so if you can figure that out, that's awesome. For me, I mean, I don't really work out with anybody, so I don't have that. But then again, I don't, that, you know, so I don't engage in those dangerous exercises, right? Mm-hmm. Lifting too heavy or lifting too hot, too high without anybody. But I will say, I, I love the shorts of like a, like the gym community thing where it's like, um, oh, there's one really cute one where it was, there's this guy just doing a bench, right? And then there's, uh, and he was recording himself, himself because that's just what people do these days. They record themselves benching. I'm just, I'm, it's fine. Uh, you know, it's good, it's good to document your progress. It's fine. I'm joking. But it is kind of silly if I'm going to walk around like, yep. <laughs> but, there, you know, there's some wholesome ones where it's like they're doing a bench or something and then they're really struggling and then someone in the background is like, you know, just like ready to jump into action type of thing. Yeah. That's so cute. I love that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, uh, 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 or like a whole, the whole, like I said before, like the SST strength training where you're doing your bench and everybody comes in. And everybody's hyping you. Everybody is hyping you up Mm -hmm. from the big people to the small people. They're like, you got this. And that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Right. And I will never discredit that. So this whole rant about working out and exercising, that's not the point of it. Um, uh, I'm not degrading it. I'm just saying that there's just a really bad public mental image, (laughs) a really bad stereotype that if that's something that wards you away from working out and bettering yourself, then, hey, just do what I do. Just don't go to the gym. Figure it out at home. Mm-hmm. Maybe do a home gym if you're if you're comfortable with setting that up, or work out with your buddies, or you know, I, I mean, I'm doing it by myself. My brother Alvin, he does it by himself, and we're fine, and we're physically well, and it's and we're finding ways to have a lot of fun with it. So, uh, oh, there was this one. I'll just say this really quick. There was this one really wholesome one. There's this another type of guy right mm-hmm. i can't remember his name i apologize because that's how shorts work you don't remember the user um <laughs> or TikTok, that's how tiktok's where you never remember the user yep. but you remember the dude i guess or the girl um this dude super bloated right um but he makes he's part of the wholesome category mm-hmm. he's like there's one he made where it's like you, you know you know the whole idea of meal prep mm-hmm. right five five to seven days a week just chicken and rice right Mm-hmm. But then he's just like, oh, how to spice it up and have some fun with it and, and enjoy the cooking process and enjoy the ki- the kitchen process. Or um, do you still live with your do you do you live with your parents and do your, your your does your mom cook you cook like does your mom cook your food? Then you should enjoy it. You know, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> and you should eat it because she's not gonna be able to do it all the time. I'm like, man, <laughs> shit, man, shit, man, shit. Just, and there's nothing more wholesome than a buff like balloon dude. Wearing a wearing wearing a bro tank, saying, "Hey, you know, eat your mom's food, even if it's you know what whatever the nutri- nutritional value is, just eat it. It's whatever. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself." And that's what I was saying, right? Yeah. Have exercising is something that either you love or you don't love. I can't say I, I'm in a love hate relationship. Mm-hmm. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not one or the other. I'm in the middle. I do it and I enjoy it sometimes. But I find ways to enjoy it. In <laughs> it's ways complicated. I, it is complicated. It's a complicated relationship. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we have time for today, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. Sorry for the short episode, but you boys got to run. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Zach, for complying with the schedule. Oh, dude, no worries at all. Sweet. I, I'm here for it. Hopefully the server isn't too loud. I didn't mention that I built a server, but maybe we can bring it up next week and I can... I mean, I only just set it up. I set up a NAS. We can go about it next week, see how it's been going. Maybe it dies next week. You know, I don't want it to be foreshadowed and talk about how great my server is and then it dies the next <laughs> week. That would suck. Fair enough. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up um if you guys are listening on spotify there's literally nothing that you can do so I'm i think there's a, des- there's a description on spotify i don't really know quite how it works but there is i have no idea mm-hmm. anyways we have links in the description to our socials uh uh give a uh, shoot us a comment tell us what you think tell us to talk about something else we have videos popping up we'll just have youtube pick them because mm-hmm. that's kind of how we do things anyways i love you guys goodbye goodbye